Another month has come and gone in the basketball world, which means it's time for us to revisit the next class of talent getting ready to become NBA players. Every month I publish an updated mock draft leading up to the main event in order to stay up to date on how the top prospects are performing and how they stack up against each other. And over the last month, we have seen a lot of movement amongst these guys, both good and bad. The order that these teams will be selecting in is based on the current NBA standings at the time this video is being made, and this is also the first mock draft of the year where we'll be running through the entire lottery. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. Starting with the first pick in the draft, the Detroit Pistons select Alexander Saar from France. The Pistons need a lot of help across the board, so if they do land the number one pick, they'll be taking the best player available, which right now does appear to be Saar. He's a 7'1 versatile big man that can play minutes at both center and power forward, he's an impressive athlete that moves well on the floor, is a terrific rim runner, has been showing notable improvement as a spot-up shooter, and he blocks a ton ton of shots inside. Him and Jalen Duran, alongside Osar Thompson in the front court, would help solidify the team's porous defense in a big way, and would hopefully be a step in the right direction to getting them out of their never-ending rut of losing. Next, with the second pick, the Washington Wizards select Nikola Topic from Serbia. The Pistons are getting all of the attention for their losing, but the Wizards are barely doing any better, and one clear position of need for them is at point guard, especially for their future. Topic is yet another rendition of the influx of highly skilled and well-balanced European guards coming into the league with good size for a primary ball handler at 6'6". Topic has a natural feel for playmaking, which is still shining through in his transition to the EuroLeague this season, but with this move, his usage is down a bit, so it will be key to monitor how he performs moving forward against this tougher competition. Up next, with the third pick, the San Antonio Spurs select Zachary Rissache from France. We may be seeing a French revolution in the NBA game because Rissache is yet another top prospect coming from them, and he's been catching the eyes of NBA scouts in a few important ways. For one, as a wing player, he has good size at 6'8", and he's been absolutely lighting it up this season shooting the ball. He's knocking down an impressive 46% of his threes, and he does tremendous work operating in spot-ups, transition, off-ball screens, offensive boards and cuts, and he hasn't really been tasked with much to do as a creator with the ball in his hands though, so that part of his game still needs to be delved into a bit more. Next, with the fourth pick, the Charlotte Hornets select Jacoby Walter from Baylor. Walter is looking like the new top prospect from the collegiate scene and is climbing boards because of his ability to be a pure scorer at the next level. He's averaging a solid 15 points per game so far, and more importantly, he's a high-volume three-point shooter knocking down 40% of his looks from deep. What makes his skill set so most likely to be able to translate as well is the fact that, while he is an excellent spot, up shooter. He's also an impressive movement shooter, getting his looks running off screens, pulling up off the dribble, and being able to comfortably shoot over contests. Next, with the fifth pick, the Portland Trailblazers select Matas Buzelis from G League Ignite. Buzelis entered the year viewed as someone who should be in contention for the number one pick, but his season has not quite gone as expected at all. He started the year working his way back from an ankle injury, and since his return to the court, he's been slowly working his way back into the mix while struggling in the playing time that he's been getting in the G League. He's not shooting the ball that well at all, and the level of physicality also seems to be bothering him at the moment, but many scouts are still willing to bet on his long-term potential because the shooting is expected to improve based on his pre-injury production, and his positional versatility on both ends is still something that teams would like to work with. Up next with the sixth pick, the Memphis Grizzlies select Ron Holland from G League Ignite. Holland teamed up with Buzelis in the G League this year, and unfortunately for him, he too is seeing his draft stock decline a bit after once being viewed as another contender to be the number one pick. What made him such an intriguing talent was his explosive athleticism and his potential to be a reliable three-level scorer, but in the G League, his jumper has looked a lot worse than expected, making just 17% of his threes, and he's committing more turnovers than he is dishing out assists, which makes you question his decision-making. 
tanking. With the Grizzlies now likely tanking for the year, he would actually be a really good fit playing alongside John Morant in a fast-paced offense next year though. Next, with the seventh pick, the Spurs, who own the Raptors pick, select Rob Dillingham from Kentucky. The point guard position is very easily the Spurs' biggest need right now, and with them missing out on Nikola Topic earlier in this draft, they would not hesitate to select Dillingham here, who has steadily risen on draft boards all season long. Dillingham is arguably the craftiest guard in the entire draft this year, with the ability to get to his spots at will, pull up on a dime and comfortably and efficiently knock down shots shots, and see the floor to make plays for his open teammates when the defense collapses on him on his drives. Up next with the 8th pick, the Atlanta Hawks select Reed Shepard from Kentucky. Speaking of Kentucky guards flying up draft boards, Shepard is also turning a lot of heads at the college level because he quite simply is the perfect example of smart, efficient basketball. He always seems to make the right play and the right read, no pun intended, on the floor without ever forcing things, and every shot he puts up you feel like is going in. He's shooting an insane 56% from the field and 54% from three. He's got got nearly a 3 to 1 assist to turnover ratio, and he's snatching 2.5 steals per game as well. So while he may not have traditional star potential, I really don't see a world where he isn't a high level role player at worst. Next, with the ninth pick, the Rockets, who own the Nets pick, select Isaiah Collier from USC. Isaiah is yet another player who entered the year with early season hype that he just has not really delivered upon. While the things that made scouts originally impressed with him are still there, such as his quickness with the ball in his hands and his toughness on drives, his weaknesses are becoming more difficult to ignore. His jumper has not been reliable, shooting just 31% from deep, and he's committing just about as many turnovers as he is dishing out assists, which just is not good enough for someone expected to be a top point guard prospect. Up next, with the 10th pick, the Trailblazers, who own the Warriors pick, select Kyle Filipowski from Duke. Filipowski's disappointing rookie season at Duke last year soured a lot of people on him, but thankfully he's bounced back well this year and improved across the board in all of the areas that were causing concern. He's a highly skilled 7-footer who is now showing he can not only be much more reliable finishing at the rim and knocking down threes, but he's also making smarter decisions with the ball in general, dishing out key assists when the defenses hone in on him more. Next, with the 11th pick, the Chicago Bulls select Cody Williams from Colorado. Williams is another player that fits the big wing archetype who will come in and play solid defense, and his early season shooting numbers have also helped him climb into the lottery. He did suffer an injury that forced him to miss most of December, but in the eight games that he has played so far this season, he's putting up about 14 points, shooting 58% from the field and 46% from three, which is really good, obviously. But he takes few fewer than two three-point attempts per game, so we're going to need a bigger sample size from him before we can actually label him as a sharpshooter. Up next, with the 12th pick, the Thunder, who own the Jazz pick, select T. John Salon from France. Yet another lottery talent coming from France is garnering attention over there, as Salon is one of the youngest prospects in France's top league that gets regular minutes, and actually plays well in those minutes. He's been really heating up from three lately, and at 6'8", his combination of shot making and athletic burst will of course be something that the Thunder would be very interested in, as they've hit several home runs drafting this type of player over the last few years. Next, with the 13th pick, the Thunder, who also own the Rockets pick, select Donovan Klingon from Yukon. Donovan is unfortunately out injured at the moment, but so far this season he has proven to be a beast of a rim protector with soft touch around the basket, and the Thunder could absolutely use some insurance for Chet Holmgren to anger the defense with that second unit. And finally, with the last pick of the lottery, the Pelicans, who own the Lakers pick, select Stefan Castle from UConn. Castle is another player who was recovering from an ankle injury early in the season, so he's been slowly working his way back into action, but from what we have seen from him, he does a very good job using his explosiveness to his advantage, he locks up on defense, he's a very good passer and rebounder for a combo guard, and he's an efficient finisher in the paint around the basket. He just needs to improve his perimeter shooting, to really start shooting up draft lists even more. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below which prospect you're most excited about. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.